same quiz, just made a bunch of copies because you don't want to just learn it for today. You kind of want to be able to recognize these throughout. So I will put it on Schoology when you'll have one, but it'll just be this exact thing. Um, eight or seven of your choice uh, name. And it looks like you guys did really well, super duper well. Um, okay, so today is test review day, test review day. Um, your test is 45 multiple choice questions. And I did go ahead and um, do the zip grade again due to popular demand. Uh, so you don't have to use pencil uh, and you, you'll get that part of the grade right away. You'll get that zip grade is with my phone where you don't put your name when you get the, so um, just cost money, but, um, and there'll be uh, a free response uh, section. Also, there'll be a free response section. So, um, and today's double thirds. Now you had homework, but I wanted to give you guys a chance because I said, even if you didn't understand, just outline the variables for the problems. I wanted to give you guys a chance to ask any questions on that. So if you could get out the half-life homework, um, because you do have a half-life problem as one of your FRQs. Huh? Oh, it's all about setup. It's never about the right answer. <laughs> it's all about how you get there. Um, So did anyone have one you need me to go over? Yeah. Uh, oh, the very last one? The possible bonus question. So, um, yeah, so this is uranium-238. It says decays by alpha emission, comma, then two beta emissions, comma. So each one of these commas is kind of a different line. So first we'll do uranium-238. So 238, you have to look on the periodic table. It has the atomic number of 92. Yeah. Um, and it tells you alpha emission. So you're, it's decaying by alpha emission. So let's, uh, you guys remember what an alpha particle is? Yep, four and two alpha. So um, the daughter is then gonna be 234 and 90, which we know is thorium, right? Thorium. So that ends that. So now thorium is where you start. Thorium 90 to 34, that's the parent. And it says two beta emissions. So thorium will decay by two beta emissions. And unless it's called positron, go with the original beta emission, which is zero minus one beta. And it says there are two of them. So zero minus one beta. And then, so what would go here? Well, the mass doesn't change. 234 is not gonna change. And this would have to be 92. Minus one is 91, minus one is 90 to be that. And then you look on the periodic, that's uranium. Oh my God, we're back to uranium, but now it weighs less, right? Now it's not uranium 238, now it's uranium 234. So we've done that part. Then it says five additional alpha emissions. So now we have uranium-234 decaying by five additional alphas. So you have a four, two, alpha, and four, two, alpha, and four, two, alpha, 
and a four, two alpha, and a four, two alpha. So what's the daughter going to be? So this, the bottom is 10. So this must be 82 because 82 plus 10 is 92. And uh, this is four times five is 20. So that would be 214. And what element is number 82? Lead. So that is the five additional alpha transmissions. Do you, does this make sense how to do this, guys? Do I need to do the whole thing? Could I do number nine? I would love to do number nine. Okay. So half-life they give us is 1.3 minutes. So that's the half-life. It's asking how long will it take for a sample of uranium? So it's asking a time. So that's, I'm solving for big T. Big T is what I don't know. I'm given half-life of 1.3 minutes. This is the formula. And then it says to one 32,768th its original mass. So kind of the simplest way to do this, because there's tons of amounts that you could get that percentage of, um, is to make this the original mass and this the final mass, right? So one is what you end up with. What did you start with? 32768. And that could be grams, ounces, rads, whatever. But that's kind of the simplest way to make the starting and ending. Does that make sense? So if you start with this and you end with that, you've ended with one thirty-two thousandth of what you started with. If you start with 10 and end with one, you end with one tenth of what you started with, right? Um, so that just helps it fit in the formula. Step one is to simplify. So <laughs> I'm gonna divide by 32768. Oh, wow, it's back to that again. And that equals 0 0.5 raised to T to 1.3. So in your calculator, go ahead and simplify your fractions right off the bat. So one divided by three, two, seven, six, eight. And I get, yes. Uh, I decided to do a phase off like six, six, so I ended up putting 3.0 times 10 to the negative. Is that uh, to do? No. No, just keep the number the way it is. Um, are you sure you didn't, are you, are you talking at this stage or at this stage? Uh, the stage of my calculator. Okay, so you just kept it at 3.0? Yeah. Why, why would you go down to, because of 1.3? Yeah, I used Okay. Sure. So not here. You didn't make the okay. So you jumped to okay. Ooh, got it. Um so we get three point zero five one one two three four five one eight. And then I'm going to use e to the minus five just because it takes up less room, but that's times 10 to the negative fifth. And that equals 0 0.5 T over half-life. Then what's my next step? Whenever I'm solving for T, I got to take log, but I don't take it until now, right? So I will do the log of 3.0518 E minus five and t over 1.3 log of 0 0.5. To get t all by itself on this side, I'm going to multiply this side by 
and that's going to let it cancel out. If I do it on this side, I have to do it on this side. And then to get T again, I'm going to divide this side by the log of 0 0.5. If I do it on this side, I have to do it on this side, log of 0 0.5. So basically everything is canceled except for T on this side. So then it is all calculator use. So I'm going from left to right, 1.3, and I'm timesing it by the log of scientific notation. So second, oh, no, the go back, log of put in your base number, 3.0518. Then, oh, wait, clear. Did I screw this whole thing? 1.3 times log of 3.0518. 0.518 second function e, e minus five. So I've got all of that in. I don't need to do close parentheses, but I can. And I hit an equal sign, so I hit equals. Now I need to describe what's on the bottom. To describe what's on the bottom, I hit divided by, and now it says, okay, well, what's on the bottom? Uh, and that is the log of 0.5. Again, you don't have to use the parentheses and you hit enter. And we get this 19.49997. So if I wanted this with five sig figs, I want one, two, three, four, five, but I check that one and that bumps this up, which bumps this up. So I get 19.500, and then this is time, so in minutes, yeah? So you got then, um, Joshua, you got 20 minutes for your answer? No, I got 19. Because I also routed the because earlier we had done it to just the uh, thing like got the decimal, so I can do it that way. And I still got a 19. But your five would have rounded that up to 20. Because earlier it was like when you had it, like I didn't put in like the decimal, my brain is still thinking that. Okay. Okay. What do you think? Make sense? Any other question on this? Yes. So how many times does it include the time or the half life? So how are we supposed to do that? Okay, so how many half lives? So remember that T is total time. This is half life. Right? And T divided by this, you know, is N, which is equal to half lives. How many half lives have gone? So they do give you both. I mean, you're solving for N. You're solving for these two. Um, so it's asking for N. Is that makes sense? Yeah. So you just have one as final mass equals 20, 48, 0 0.5 to the N, which is kind of the original simplified formula. And you're just solving for N. And yeah, you'll have to take the log of both sides. Good question though. Really, that's, that's what would catch me up. Half life versus half lives. Any other questions on this? Go on once. Yes. Um, Number fourteen. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
So cobalt 60 is used in cancer radiation therapy. If you start with scary number of atoms, so start with, this would be our N initial. How much time will pass before the amount is reduced to scary number, final. And they give us the half-life is 5.26 years. So this is my half-life. So remember the formula is N final equals N initial. 0.5 raised to total time divided by half-life. And they've given us this one, this one, and half-life. So we have to solve for total time. We have to solve for total time. So I'm going to do what I call plugging and chugging. I just need to put the numbers in. 1.764 times 10 to the sixth is my final equals my initial, hello, 4.515 times 10 to the eighth. And I'm gonna multiply that by 0.5, raising it to total time divided by 5.26. So then I'm gonna follow the same plan I did before is I'm gonna simplify by dividing this side by itself, 4.515 times 10 to the eighth. If I do it on this side, I need to do it on this side. So 4.515 times 10 to the eighth. That way it cancels out here. And you wanna go ahead and do this now in the calculator. So in your calculator, 1.764 second function. E, e to the six, and then I'm going to go divided by 4.515 second function E, e to the eight. Now, I don't know if any of you guys know the rules. You could just do the base numbers and subtract the exponents, but I don't know if you don't, don't worry about that. And that's the number you get. So we're going to replace all of this with 0.003 nine zero seven going with four sig figs because of my base number has four sig figs 5.26 is a count and that will equal 0.5 raised to t over 5.26 and it's at this stage where i'm going to take the log of both sides so it'll be the log of 0 0.003907 and T over 5.26 log of 0 0.5. Remember we take the log so we can move that exponent down in front. That's why we're using that tool that we have. To simplify, I'm gonna multiply this by 5.26 over one. Whatever I do on one side, I have to do on the other, 5.26. Anything over itself cancels out. So that's now gone. I wanna simplify even further by getting T by itself. So I'll divide this side by the log of 0.5. If I do it on this side, I have to do it on this side, the log of 0.5. This is gone. So everything's gone but T. So I'm right now back to the calculator. And I'm going to, let me make sure you guys can see, just read across. So 5.26 times the log. 0 0.003907. I'm at the end of my line, so I hit equals. Then I'm going under my line, so divided by, say, okay, so what's under the line? Log of 0.5. I'm at the end, hit equals. What do we think? What would I write? 42.08, yep.
42.08. And then I don't even remember how much time will pass. It's in years, so this would be in years. Whatever unit they give you is also the unit you answer in. Making some, yes. Yes, yeah. Your, your measured amounts are usually the quantity, so your ends. The others are often counts, so they have infinite, which you don't want to use infinite. So you go down. We feel good? Feel good about half-life problems? Yeah? Okay, so um, you have a test on unit two. And uh, so unit two was all about the atom. And the first thing we did at the very, very beginning is I asked you what you already knew. And overwhelmingly, you guys knew that atoms were made out of protons, uh, neutrons, and electrons. So we really didn't cover that. So we hopped right in to the very first thing, which was what, 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 what? Does anyone remember? Hmm? Ions, yeah, we hopped right into ions. Um, to do that, we went over who discovered the electron, right? So we also, instead of teaching this, we went over some history on how awesome it is that you guys know all this because of people before us. And um, who, who did discover the electron? Yeah. Hmm? hmm, maybe, but traditionally it's the guy who put it in a gas tube and moved the gas with a magnet. Yeah, so who's that? No. Nope. Rutherford's the gold foil, yeah. Yes, yes, Thompson. So Thompson discover the electron ions are so what does ions have to do with electrons ions are charged atoms right charged atoms and they can be two different types do you remember the two different types yeah anions. yep they can be anions or cations and you did a whole ion table. You did a whole ion table. So that's a skill you completely need on the multiple choice section. I ask you, you know, how many electrons in this? And I give you a uh, element symbol, like calcium plus two, how many electrons in that? So any symbol I give you, can you give me the number of electrons? And if it doesn't have a charge, remember the electrons equal the number of protons in a neutral atom. Uh, so anions are negatively charged, cations are positively charged. We also went over how to name them. If it's an anion, it ends in IDE. And if it's a cation, you just name the metal, whatever the metal is, and you say the word or write the word ion. All metals become cations. So what become anions? Non-metals, yep, non-metals. So we went over ions. Now, after Thompson, yeah, he found the ion, the electron. We then did a little more history because we went for how are the electrons arranged? So electron arrangement. The electron arrangement around the atom is what we talked about. And so this was, was really helpful with, this is called the planetary model. Who came up with the planetary model? Or, right? And with the planetary model, you learned a whole bunch of stuff. 
first that the first energy level is a quantum number and it's called n equals one. And the second ring or is called n equals two. But now you know it's an energy level. And the third energy level is n equals three. The fourth energy level is n equals four. Then you learned a bunch of stuff about each level. Uh, the first energy level holds how many electrons? Two. So it holds two electrons. And the second energy level holds how many? Eight electrons. And um, if you're if you're not remembering how to do that. Ah. The first period has hydrogen and helium in it. That's two. The second period has one, two, and six, eight elements in it. That's eight. The third period has two, 10, and eight. So third period can hold how many? 18. Remember this is 3D, so that's why I meant third period holds these 10. And then four through seven can hold, let's add them up, two, 10, 14, and six. So 32, 32 electrons. And that's for n equals, all the way through to n equals seven, right? It's the same all the way through to seven. So you learned how many electrons they can hold. Well, we had to go even further. We talked about sublevels. In the first energy level, there is one sublevel and it's called S and it's shaped like a sphere. I don't know if it's a coincidence. The sec, and this is the S block elements, right? So one and two are S blocks. The second energy level, has sublevel S and P. So if you look at second, here's the S block and the P block. Those are sublevels that hold the electrons. In the third one, we have S, P, and D. And then in the fourth through seven, we have all four of them, right? S, P, D, and F. S, P, D, and F. So with this information, you need to be able to do electron configurations where you're literally describing exactly where each electron is located around any atom. Now, that wasn't enough because then we related it all to energy. And we related it to energy to ultimately get to the flame test lab. So when we related it to energy, we said, okay, everything close to the nucleus is low energy. And the further you get from the nucleus, the greater the energy the electrons have. So electrons close to the nucleus are low energy. So we now have a low, we have an energy scale, low to high. Well, the closest ones is the S, the one S sublevel is the closest one. Then we're at the two, which has the S and the P. So we get these guys. You remember what these guys are called? Orbital, right? So we did electron configurations and then we start looking at the energy with them and that brings us to orbital diagrams. And then we have three S and P and then, and then there's this D in there, this weird little D. So each one of these blocks, these cubes are the orbitals. So it's a new term and there are rules to the orbital. Orbitals hold two electrons. So the S sublevel 
consist of how many orbitals? One orbital, right? So S has one orbital. How many does P have? Three, right? Six electrons, but they travel in pairs. So that's three orbitals. So S plus P for, this is up to four orbitals. Does that make sense to everyone? Three for the P and one for the S. How many orbitals total for quantum number three? Five. So five plus three plus one, yes, nine, nice. Nine orbitals. And then what is nine plus seven? How much? 16. Does anyone know anything about 16? Okay, never mind. 16 orbitals. Um, so with the orbital diagrams, you learn three rules, off bow. Basically fill from low to high, right? They always fill from low to high. Poly. They hold two and they have to go in opposite directions, right? And they're spinning opposite spins, orbitals hold two. Off bow is low to high. They fill low to high. And then Hund is they fill empty orbitals first before pairing up, or we know this as the bus seat rule, right? So uh, fill empty orbitals, first. And I already alluded to why we did this. So we could discuss the flame test lab. So you could do the flame test lab. And basically, the flame test lab was all about adding energy to an atom. And when you add energy to an electron, it jumps to a higher energy level. So when you put energy in, the electron jumps. You have this on one of your cards, right? And that's when it's excited. And then when it returns or falls back down to its ground state, it releases light, right? It releases a specific wavelength of light. And that's all based on the electron arrangement. So that's how all of that went together. Is it all coming back to you? Hopefully not in a PTSD way, but a better, more cohesive way. So that took care of our ions. What did we do after ions? Also starts with an I. Isotopes. <clears throat> And isotopes are heavy and light versions of atoms, right? So they're heavy and light versions of atoms. Now, ions were all about changing the electrons, isotopes all about the neutrons, right? Isotopes are all about the neutrons. We get to mass number, mass number with this. Remember the mass number is protons plus neutrons. And we also talk about how isotopes can be stable or unstable. And that's where the fun began with the unstable isotopes. Now, every element exists as isotopes. Every element exists as isotopes. Um, stable ones just hang out. Unstable ones will eject particles from their nucleus to become stable. Right. And so unstable ones release radioactivity. And you have learned, you need to know what, three, four different radioactivity particles. Do you remember what they are? The particles that are emitted from the nucleus. 
Yep, we have a four, two alpha, a zero minus one beta, a zero, zero gamma, right? Hockey stick with a little thing. Positron is zero plus one. Looks like that, that's positron. Um, so don't need to know them all, but those three are pretty important. Which is the strongest one? Gamma, it's pure energy, right? Gamma is pure energy. Alpha is the weakest one. Beta is in the middle. So from low to high, strength. Now, the unstable ones ejecting these particles, that is known as decay or transmutation. So it's the decay that led us to, well, how long does it take to decay? And that's what led us to half-life, half-life problems. So that's what we covered. And we added one little thing. We added one little math skill and that was weighted average. And you will have a weighted average problem on the free response. Um, and that was just to explain that that decimal number on the periodic table is the average of the isotopes in a sample. So it's the mass of the isotope times the abundance. Mass times the abundance. So weighted average comes about because of isotopes but it also explains the decimal number on the periodic table. That was unit two. How do we feel? Yeah? So traditionally now you may ask me any questions you want about unit two. Yes, sir. Um, how much half-life is the only unit? How much half-life will be on the exam? How much half-life will be on the exam? How much half-life will be on the exam? Let me get a copy of the exam. Uh, kind of a definition. There's a definition question, the half-life of, um, yes? Another question? Yeah, yes, calculator, yes. So. I'm just gonna finish with Zane's question real quick. So we got a definition. There is a reading from a graph question. So you get a decay curve and what can you get off of graphs? Remember how to look at your notes. So you have a graph. This is the amount you start with, right? And what's on this axis? time, and let's say you start with 100, and I don't know, this is one, this is two, could be anything. What would the half-life be? How would you find the half-life of whatever this is? Hmm? Yeah, half of what this is, so you'd estimate 50, then I'd go across, I'd hit the line, then I'd go down and that would be my half-life, whatever that is. Yes. So it's only that, there's no half-life equation? No, 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 you, you, I hadn't finished answering the question. So there's one on that, there's one here. I don't have it memorized. I know I wrote it, but geez. Uh, uh, And we know there is a half-life with log problem on the, so I guess I would say these are point of P, I would say two and probably four, six points total on the test will be based on half-life, I would think. So you have some multiple choice questions. And then there is on the free response, very similar to um, this guy but it's one with log. So solving for T, right? Yeah. 
Will we get the Apple I formula or do we need to uh, memorize this? Oh, yeah, you need to memorize it. Oh, I didn't think about that. No, I will give you the half life formula. I'll put them, I'll write them on the board. And if I forget, tell me too. Yeah. No, no cards are for quizzes. Yes. I don't know if you just click it on button, but uh, I forget. Is there a difference between beta emission and just beta? uh beta emission and beta particle no. no positron emission is the positive version of the beta particle so but that won't be on the test that won't be on the test so if someone if if the it's going to be beta decay beta emission emis, emitting something just means you like you're sending something out right emitting um so beta emission would be sending that out. That's kind of slang for positron emission, but you would have to be given that information and you're not really required to know positron, the positive version of the beta. Yes. Will there be molar mass questions? Yes, 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 yes. Molar mass, so chemistry kind of builds on itself. So like we're still using sig figs, we'll use sig figs forever. So we learn them in unit one. You gotta we we use them the whole time. There is molar mass absolutely on the the test, and it's going to be molar mass of a polyatomic ion, right? So if I say what's the molar mass of hydroxide? If you look on the periodic table, you're not going to find hydroxide. So you kind of have to know that hydroxide is OH minus. The molar mass of hydroxide, does the electron have anything to do with the mass? No, so light, so it doesn't matter. But you would have to get the mass of oxygen and add it to the mass of hydrogen. Round it to the hundreds place before you do anything. Um, so oxygen is 16.00 and I'd add it to 1.01. .01. So the molar mass would be 17.01 grams per mole. Grams per mole, that's how you would do molar mass, right? Um, So yes, there's molar mass. Uh, yes. Do we have to memorize all of like the names of the people that we studied? Okay, so the people that you're asked about doo -doo -doo, is Dalton. So basically, what is not part of Dalton's atomic theory? So you just have to be familiar enough with Dalton's atomic theory to be able to pick something that's not part of Dalton's atomic theory. That's one of the questions. So Dalton's atomic theory. Um, and you already told me about the electron, who discovered the electron. And that I believe, Yeah, I think that's it. Yep, 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 that's it. So most of the multiple choice is nuclear symbol based. So for example, uh, 10, 20, 11, 20. 1121, 921. So looking at these imaginaries, like this is just in place of a element symbol, right? Because there's no E. You should know that this is the number of protons. This is the mass number. So I could ask which of the following have 11 neutrons? So from this, could you tell me which ones have 11 neutrons? How many neutrons in this guy? How many neutrons in this guy? 
nine. How many neutrons in this guy? 10. How many neutrons in this guy? 11. Everyone know? Is it 12? Okay. So, okay. Which of the following have 11 neutrons? Could you pick that out? Yeah. Cool. Um, also, let's see. Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, let's see. So a lot of them, yeah, just a lot of them are nuclear symbols. Like in the beginning, I give you a whole bunch of nuclear symbols, a whole bunch of nuclear symbols. And the questions are like, um, which of the above would be formed by the beta minus emission of nickel 63. So you get a list of these guys and you need to do the beta minus emission of nickel 63. Well, we have that for the Yeah, absolutely. You always have the periodic table. Always have the periodic table. So your first step is to look up nickel you know it's 63, but you need to have this guy. So find nickel and it's 28. And what's beta minus emission? Zero minus one, beta. So what's this guy gonna be? 29, 63, to you. And oh, look, there's, there, I don't know if it's in focus, but there's the 2963 copper, right? So, um, and which of the above is an isotope with the equal number of protons, neutrons, and electrons? And that kind of thing. Um, also, so a whole bunch of the nuclear symbols, a whole bunch of the nuclear symbols. And so let's see, nuclear symbols, one, two, three, four, five, six. If I give you something like this one, 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 eight, 50, S, N plus two, you can tell me a lot about this guy, right? I could ask a lot of questions. I could ask neutrons. I could ask electrons. How many electrons is this guy going to have? 48, right? 48 electrons. Um, so that, and then a whole bunch of them on, um, you got some orbital diagrams, oh. orbital diagrams, orbital diagrams, and electron configurations. So about 20 questions on electron config and orbital diagrams. The electron configuration is going to be like the full form in the middle uh, gas form. Full form? I, yeah, I'd give you the full form. Uh, do I give noble gases? Noble gas configuration. I don't see any. So, but you know, it's not like you're writing out the full form, you're just reading the full form. Maybe checking it for errors a lot like you did on the electron configuration worksheet. Right. If I give you electron configuration, can you tell me what element it is or match it to a nuclear symbol? Kind of thing. Any other questions? And everyone's good on weighted average? Yeah. Um, how would we, are there going to be any questions about the SPV cell? That, that's, a, yeah, 20 of them. That's electron configurations. Electrons configurations are the SPVs and Fs. How are those questions before that? Uh, determine the electron configuration for phosphorus. Determine the electron configuration for manganese. Uh, which orbital will receive the next electron after the 3p sublevel is filled? What's after 3p? 4s. Which orbital is after the 3, um, 3s sublevel? Uh, 
three S is what? Yeah. Question? Yeah. Uh, for for gold, the full electron configuration for gold. Wonderful. So here is gold. And you want me to do the full one? I can't do the, can I do the, no, but thank you. Um, but I, I'll do the full one if you want. Okay, so I need to get to gold. So I'm gonna go 6S2, then I hop down to uh, the lanthanoid series, which would be 4F14, so it's six, oh, sorry, 6S2, 4F14, and then I'm at uh, the 5D9. So remember that um, you have the S block, then you have the F block, right? Then you have the, remember this is just pulled out to slide this over, right? But follow the numbers, right? So lanthium, is the first lanthanoid. This is the first lanthanoid of the series. So 56, this tells you you're in the lanthanoids. So what are the lanthanoids? Lanthium and these, right? All the way to lutium. Lutium is the first D. And then, cause it's 71. Lutium is 71, it's the first D. The one I gave you for notes was easier to understand than this one um, because I put it right here. So, but this one is part of the lanthanoid series. And then this is actinium, part of the actinoid series, the radioactive ones. And then these last ones are your Ds. These are your D blocks up here. Yeah. Um, yeah, so there's a couple ways to do it. Um, the way you're supposed to do it is you follow the periodic table. Let me. So reading left to right. Mm -hmm. Reading left to right, you would do 1S2, right? 2S2, 2P6, 3S2, 3P6. Then we have 4S2, 3D10, 4P6. 5S2, then it's 4D10, 5P6, then it's 6S2, 4F14, 5D10, and 6P6. Then seven S two five F fourteen. Then back up to six D ten nine sixty wherever we go. So that's this way, and then the little tricky thing was if you write S, P, D, F, and there's an S in one, two, three, four, 
five. Okay, I didn't give myself room, but six, seven. Jeez. Okay, hold on. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And that's S. And then D is the uh, 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 three, four, five, six, seven. And then, oh, I forgot P. Oh my God. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then it's two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then it's three, four, five, six, seven. And then it's four, five, six, seven. Then you feel slant, right? Feel this way. And this is S, P, D, and F. So now you see these normally loopy because you got to come back and go like that. You see them as a loop. So that's the, is this the trick you were asking about? Yeah. Yeah. So basically you just line them up and they match going across the periodic table. One S2, two S2, two P6, three S2, three P6, four S2, three D10, four P6, five S2, four D10, right? So four D10, then five P6, then six S2. And after six S2, four F, 14, 5, D, 10, 6, P. Yeah. How will we have to do the average um, weighted average? Weighted average. You will be given, you'll be given um, like an unknown X. You'll be given three masses, let's say, uh, 238, 237, 235. And you'll be given percentages, let's say, I don't know. 68.14 percent and uh, of course it made it hard one two point uh, uh seven six percent and then what 70 what would that be what's left what's left one of my math geniuses uh, 12.76 what what do I get? So minus 9.9? Is it 9.9? 9 .9? 9 .9? 9 .9? What? It's 19? Is it, is it 19? Okay. Okay, so 19.1, you said. And this is 10, and that's 8. So shouldn't it be 2? Okay, whatever the percentages will be, I'll, I'll figure them out not on the fly like this. But then you're going to sum up the mass to 38. And you'll times that by 0.6814. And so mass times abundance. Then you'll do 237 times 0.1276. And then you'll do 235 times 0.19 whatever. And then you will sum these up and this will be your average weighted average. So you're saying 68% weighs this, 12% weighs this, and 19% weighs this. So what would the weighted average be? The important thing is that you just add these up. Now, following sig fig rules, 
following sig fig rules. How many sig figs in my answers here, guys? So if I take, if I'm multiplying something with three sig figs by something with four sig figs, what's my answer gonna be? Three sig figs. So 238 times 0.6814, and I get 162. And then 237 times 0.1276, and I get 30.24, so that's 30.2. And then 235 times 0.19, and I get 44.65, so that's 44.7. So now you follow these sig fig rules. Now, what are the sig fig rules for adding? What are the sig fig rules for adding? Least number of not sig figs, that's for multiplying and divide, you go with the least number of sig figs. When you're adding or subtracting, you go with the least, these, this, these rules aren't going anywhere, guys. We use them all year, right? Least number of decimal places. So between 162, 30.2, and 44.7, what's the least number of decimal places? Yeah, none. No decimal place is the least number. So when I add this up, 162 plus 30.2, plus 44.7, my calculator gives me 236.9, but I don't write that. Well, I could write that 236.9, but you don't definitely don't circle it. Um, with the correct number of sig figs, it'd be 237. Does that make sense? So multiplying divide, you go the least number of sig figs. When you're adding or subtracting, it's the least number of decimal places. Yes? You only apply sig figs on the top of Okay. How would you apply sig figs earlier than what I did? So you apply, like here, we applied the sig fig rule, right? Is because I was multiplying two numbers. So are you saying you'd want to like not take this because you know it's three sig figs? Yeah, yeah you can't do that. You can't do that. Um, yeah, no, you got to start it. And when you get to the, the math, then, then you apply the rules. Good questions, great questions. Yes. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. And no note card. Now, um, a lot of mistakes you guys made on the quiz. It is carbon, hydrogen, and there are four hydrogens for every carbon. These must be subscripts. I had a whole bunch of that. That's that's wrong. I had a whole bunch of that. Um, so, and then state of matter is this. Writing gas doesn't, that's not how you, that's not how you do it. Um, definitely not writing capital gas, definitely not using capital G. We save G for gravity, right? We save G for gravity. Um, and overall, don't change units. Uh, don't change units in here. Don't change units in physics. I know in math, you like your X's and Y's, but don't change units. So if it's N sub I, it needs to be N sub I, right? And if it's N sub F, it needs to be N sub F. So, so don't change it. And if you're going to change it, you better change it back before you show the work which is just a lot more work for you, but don't change, um, yeah, don't change units. Uh, so CH4 plus O2, oxygen, gas, arrow. So this isn't an equal hat. That's not right. Don't do that. 
right? Um, so it's an arrow like this connected. It should be, and it's not an equal sign. Uh, and we're gonna get CO2 gas and H2O. This was gas. I had several people write water or liquid. Remember your, your Bunsen burners should not have peed, right? Water did not come out of your Bunsen burners. Uh, water vapor did because you were at a thousand degrees or 700 degrees Celsius, um, which is way above the vaporization of water. Now, whether you included energy or not, doesn't matter. You did have to, however, balance, uh, balance this guy. I have one carbon on this side and one carbon on this side. I have four hydrogens on this side and only two here. So I'm going to make, boom, or by putting a two in front of it. I have two oxygens on this side. I have two here and two here. So I have to put a two there. That is a balanced combustion formula. Right. That's the balanced combustion formula. This says, if I put in one mole of methane, I get two moles of water. What if I put in two moles of methane? How much water would I get? This says if I put in one mole of methane, I get two moles of water. What if I put in two moles of methane? How much water would I get? Four, yep. Four moles of water. If I put in three moles of methane, how much water will I get? Six. If I put in four moles of methane, how much water will I get? Eight. Oh, whoa, whoa. If I put in four moles of oxygen, how much water will I get? Four, because it's two to two. So if I put in four, I get four. If I put in five, how many am I gonna get? Five. If I put in 10, how many am I gonna get? 10. Yeah. What if I, put in two moles of oxygen, how many moles of carbon dioxide do I get? One. What if I put in six moles of oxygen? How much carbon dioxide do I get? Three. Does that make sense? What if I want four carbon dioxides? I want four of these. How many methanes do I need to put in? If I want four of these, how much methane if I want four of these? Four, yeah? Welcome to stoichiometry. That's what we'll spend most of the year doing around chemical reactions, asking those relationship questions between two things. Any other questions? Yes. Could we also get uh, uh, tons of or uh, polyethylene? Uh-huh. Well, you need to know them. Yeah. So right now I need you guys to get out your tables and your homework so I can get you stamped. The only thing you're turning in next class is your homework table. That way you should use your old homework assignments to study. Make sure you can do everything on the previous assignments because you were given those because questions come directly from those. And with satellite problems. Right. 
Which one? Don't forget your baby pillows. Um, sorry, of all the people did I do this since I ended with. No, so what what you want to do is just go from here. I saw you drew arrows, so you want to go from here to here, right? And this is up here. Five D one is there, and then you would do this, and then come back. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So right from here, you go to there. That and then that is up there. Okay, that I did it this way. I still got the same. Did it what time? So, so basically, I would say, I did NI, so I just did that, and then I just did that. You're doing the same simplification. Okay. Absolutely. That's still algebra. I can't show every different way to dance around the equal sign, but you know, I got to stick with one for. But if you can dance around that equal sign, dance. 
It's double threes today. Seniors have our panoramic picture in the stadium. Tenth and eleventh grade. Oh, you're doing service day learning seminar. And you got a video. Not service learning. Bye, guys. See you for the test. Okay, recording.